The 2020 presidential election is about a year and a half away, and Melody Vincent is celebrating President Trump's recent birthday, leading cheers on a street corner. It's never too early to fire up the base. I am a Trumper. Trump has come in and stepped up when he didn't have to for free and saved our country. Vincent was one of several dozen Trump supporters who turned out to generate a happy hour honking frenzy in this intersection of the village's enclave north of Orlando. It's a good place to take the temperature of the Trump faithful, who often sound just like the president's Twitter feed. Look at what he's done for the economy. In the last two and a half years, he has done more than any president in my lifetime. The Villages is a sprawling retirement community where more than 115,000 retirees now live. And Republicans outnumber Democrats by more than two to one. It's often called a Disney World for adults, where the hot wheels of choice are golf carts. And evenings end with concerts on the square. Mike Peacock runs a golf cart rental business. He says he sees his neighbors talking Trump every night and says support for the president is stronger than ever. They love what most of the president's detractors despise. I like him because he is, he's sarcastic and I'm the same way. The devotion to President Trump is so intense here that a recent meeting of the village Republicans started out with a prayer asking God to, quote, deliver President Trump from the evil that is bent on destroying him. Do you worry that uh, President Trump's uh, divisiveness, uh, his lies, is going to hurt all, him in the, in the long run? I don't think so because I, you can't, you'd have to tell me what he's lied about, first of all. I don't think he's lied about anything. And as far as You don't think he's lied about anything? No. Democrats organized this protest rally just a few blocks away from where President Trump is hosting his re-election campaign kickoff. Wes Hodge is the chairman of the Orange County Democratic Party in Orlando. He says Trump's divisiveness is waking up a new wave of voters. I think there's more excitement on our side because people now understand that every single vote's going to matter and that we, you know, some people were like, no, he can't win in 2016. And now that we've seen what's happened, people are energized like never before. A new Quinnipiac University poll does show early signs of potential trouble for Trump in Florida. In the poll, the president is trailing Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, and Elizabeth Warren in this crucial battleground state, while three other Democratic hopefuls are running neck and neck. Enough is enough. Maria Reyes moved to Orlando from Puerto Rico after Hurricane Maria. She dismisses the intensity of support from Trump's base and argues Florida is shifting away from the president. It's not acceptable what is going on under Trump administration, especially for minorities, uh, for Puerto Ricans, and that's why we're here today. And Aaron, if you talk polls with any Trump supporter, they will tell you they are incredibly dismissive of anything that shows President Trump behind in any kind of polls. They look back to 2016 and like to claim that none of the polls were right back then. And they don't think that so far they're showing what they see on the ground out here, Aaron. All right, thank you very much, Ed Lavendera. And now, former White House Communications Director Anthony Scaramucci. And Anthony, look, um, and obviously you're, you're, you're joining us. Uh, everyone should see, just because I see the background from Rome tonight, um, where they're watching this race as closely probably as, as we all are. But look, Florida, a crucial swing state. The president there, of course, he won it by a percentage point. Ed points out uh, rightly, Fox News and everybody else's polls did not show that on the eve of the election. Uh, nonetheless, uh, the president is looking at polls now that show him losing to Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders handily. How worried are you about Democratic enthusiasm for turnout in Florida? Well, listen, it, it's, I think we would all accept that it's very early and uh, we could point to people like Howard Dean that had huge leads at this point and so on and so forth. So yeah. I, I, I am a little more worried than I would be in 2016 because the president is not a novelty anymore and he is running on a track record. And so, you know, I've often said uh, on this network and other networks, what the president is doing has been astounding. He's got a great economic record to run on. How he sometimes does it, however, I think is creating a headwind for him. And so uh, what I'm hoping is he goes back to the State of the Union address, uh, that sort of communication style, Aaron, hmm. uh, and he uses that over the next six to nine months. I think that would really help him a great deal 
because uh, it would calm people down. And so uh, for me right now, I would say it is very, very early, uh, but he is no longer a new entity like he was in 2016. All right. And, and now, nationally, there's a Fox poll, which is interesting because when he tweets about that, he's sort of is, is talking about how he's confused by it, you know, whereas if it came from anybody else, it's fake news. But it's Fox, so he didn't want to call it that. Uh, and in the Fox poll, he trails Joe Biden by nine points. This is nationally. Uh, Anthony, Bernie by uh, nine, Bernie Sanders, it, it, within the margin of error against Elizabeth Warren, Kamala Harris, and Pete Buttigieg. He is pretending that his own internal polls don't show him losing key states, which, of course, all that leaked out, and we know they do show that. Again, this is early, but that's what they show. And he has been clear, of course, as you know, that he loves polls, and only good polls, and everything else he ignores. Here he is. I love those polls when they're good. Now, if they're no good, I don't report them. The Los Angeles Times has a six points up nationwide. Good poll. If it weren't, I wouldn't be telling you about it, I promise. If we're doing badly, I don't know about polls. No, it's true. When we do badly, I don't know about polls, right? <laughs> but when we're doing well, I know about polls. Okay, laughing aside, do you think he realizes that he has headwinds and that he needs to start moving? I, I do, and I, I would say that he had headwinds in uh, four years ago when he launched the campaign, and he was 22 points behind Jeb Bush. And so, yeah, he absolutely has headwinds. The reason I'm laughing is, like Steve Jobs and most entrepreneurs, they create this reality distortion field around themselves, uh, and they try to will themselves to the reality that they want. And so, in the case of the president last time, there was a lot of mixed polls, Aaron. We both know that. Yep. Uh, maybe the LA Times had a good poll and Rasmussen had a good poll, but there were a lot of really negative polls leading up until Election Day. And so, I think the president is going to pick and choose the polls that he likes. That's obvious. Wow. He did yep. that before. Uh, but the real question is, Will he be able to turn things on in a way and close the gap in the, in the polls that you're looking at and the polls that I'm looking at? All and right. I, I predict that yeah. he will because he just has such a very strong economy to run on. All right. One thing, though, he's running on, right, and his whole thing is promises made, promises kept, and certainly is plenty of those. One of the first, though, and the biggest, and certainly the most often made to this entire country that nobody could ever forget is this one. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Yeah. Mark my words. I promise we're building the wall, and Mexico will pay for the wall. I promise. In the end, Mexico's paying for the wall. They're going to pay for the wall, and they're going to enjoy it, OK? Does he think not keeping that promise actually helps him as a rallying call? Well, I would, I would say that he, he would look at it probably, and I think the part of the narrative is going to be that he's been trying to keep that promise. And uh, you may remember prior to the midterms, he was trying to cut a deal on the Dreamers, the whole DACA situation, uh, to get border uh, funding for the wall. Now, that would have came from the United States and the taxpayer, of course. So right. uh, I, think it's, I think it's a hard promise for him to keep. Uh, but I think he can go down a list of things. And unfortunately, he's in the political world now. Uh, and a lot of things that you sometimes promise you can't <coughs> quite meet. But mm -hmm. there's a whole list of promises, Aaron, that he has been able to keep. And one of them is wage growth. Uh, so you have an uh, interesting situation. You have real GDP growth, very low inflation. But for the bottom 10% of earners, you've got about a 5.4% wage increase hmm. since he became president. I hope he runs on that. I think that's the right narrative for the run on. Uh, but you're right, and I'll cede that to you. He has not been able to make that promise. But there is a whole host of other promises that he's come so, in on, uh, which I think his base certainly likes.